of the attendee list. Okay, super. Thanks, Mary. So whenever you'd like to start, Mary Ellen. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Hope all is well. Welcome. It looks like the weather is like beginning to be more like my background. Getting there slowly, but surely. Um, I will call the meeting to order so we can get going. Um, I, I did want to say just a couple of words about the webinar that was um, presented last month. It was excellent. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to tune in, but um, really great, in great information, really um, well presented. Um, it, it was um, technical, but it was in lay terms and um, it was um, a good, really great snapshot as to which sectors, you know, are really struggling and, and just basically how everything is connected. Um, all of the work that's being done here uh, was reflected in the um, issues that were brought to the fore in the webinar. So um, he's excellent and I'll be looking forward to his periodic updates. Um, I'm not, I'm guessing that the um, webinar we have on recording so that if folks were not able to participate, they can get access to the information or at least the, the presentation, the PowerPoint, is that correct? Yes, so it is on our YouTube channel right now, um, as well as, I'll look and see if it's on our website too. Um, it should be, but I'll put a link in the, um, in the chat in a minute once I find it. Yeah, no, no, it's uh, just as long as people know where to, where to find it, I think is the most important thing. Um, so anyways, that was great. And we'll look forward to um, the continuing updates. And I'm gonna go ahead and read the accessibility and non-discrimination statement. Old Colony Planning Council, including this committee, said, assure that no person shall be excluded from participation in be denied the benefits of or be otherwise discriminated against under any of its programs and activities. This meeting is accessible to people with disabilities and those with limited English proficiency. Accessibility accommodations and language services will be provided free of charge upon request as available. Our full policies are available at www.occrpa.org. Any person who feels their protections have been violated may file a written complaint within 180 days to Mary Waldron at M Waldron. That's M W A L D R O N at O C P C R P A dot org or Old Colony Planning Council, 70 School Street, Brockton, Mass, 02301. And um, I believe um, Joanne is monitoring the um, meeting attendees. So I'll kick it over to her for a roll call. All right. Um, so if I call your name, please say whether or not you're here. Well, whether you are here. John Murray? Here. Mary Ellen Brett? Here. Chris Cooney? Deb Petty? Forrest Lindwall? Frank Lynham? Jason Hunter? Present. Jay Patekis sent his apologies, so he's not here. Uh, Jennifer Burke, Lee Hartman, Marlene Amadi, mm. Mary Ellen DeFreyas also sent her apologies, she's not here. Uh, Michael Lambert, Pam McCarthy. Here. Pelej Marcelin, Rob May. Here. Rob Downey, Sean Boucher, Sheila Sullivan Jardim. Stephanie Danielson, Tracy Costa, and Val Massard. Here. Super. And then we also have Leah Filson, or Lee, sorry, <laughs> Lee mm. Filson. And then we've got OCPC staff, Sean Bailey, Joanne Zygmunt, Mary Waldron, Lori Muncy, and Dottie Fulginetti. All right. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, uh, for being here. I'm gonna switch over to the meeting minutes that we had from the April meeting. And uh, that was sent out um, courtesy of Joanne in the email uh, noting this um, meeting. So I, I presume folks have had a chance to review those um, meeting minutes. Does anybody need additional time? Does anybody have any questions? 
if there's a motion to accept the minute. Oh, oh, hang on just a second. I had a question. You bet, Rob. Um, there was some, there, there could be confusion uh, because you're talking about stuff that happened in the May meeting and then May made a motion to approve or something like that. And I didn't know if, I noticed you're using everybody's last names, but because of the month of May, is it, you know, should I change my name because it's confusing? That would be helpful. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Or you can just do you R, R May. R May. Sure. Might be easier for, for readers to follow. I don't know. Yep. If it's not a problem. Happy to do that. No, not a problem. Happy to do that. I'll do that for everyone. It's only a problem once a year, but it will last. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm problematic. Uh, after that, okay, so I move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? I second it. Thanks, Pam. Uh, is there um, uh, any objections? All in favor? By hand vote. Uh, <clears throat> then the minutes are accepted. Thanks, everyone. Um, so I, I think we're kind of at the point where we're trying to close out the terms of reference uh, for the organization of, uh, of this particular committee for OCPC. And we have made great progress. Um, Joanne, Dottie, um, everyone in OCPC has been great, but especially uh, Joanne for leading this effort. Much appreciated, we're getting close. And um, hopefully, you know, by the end of this meeting or ideally uh, before the fall kicks off, we'll be able to um, have that wrapped up. So I will uh, turn it over to Joanne to walk us through what remains. Great, thank you. So you should have received two documents um, in the notification of this meeting. The first is um, a review of the SEDS committees that are led by the other RPAs in the state who are also economic development districts. Um, so I pulled together the information that I could find on their website and I also reached out individually to each of them with follow-up questions. Um, as you can see, if you've looked through the document, everybody does it differently. Um, the only similarity really between all of them is that they um, do have a membership that is pretty diverse, both municipalities, uh, business organizations, community groups, even some legislators in some instances. Um, but other than that, they're, they're all very much different, ranging in size from, um, I think the smallest one is, I think about 10 or so, or just about a dozen to um, some being pretty huge. Um, MBPC has over 50 members. Um, so um, I did get some information from some of the RPAs after I had sent this out to you. So just to summarize the new information I received. Um, so SERPED, their SEDS committee is chosen by the SEDS program manager, which for OCPC is me. Um, he approves the membership and then passes the membership on to the chair um, for the committee to consider. Um, what else did I receive? And then I got some further information as well from FERCOG, so that's the uh, Franklin Region RPA. Um, their quorum isn't a simple majority, but is actually just seven members. Um, and their um, and their committee members are chosen, they're appointed by the FERCOG Executive Committee, which is the Economic Development Governing Board, but the staff do the outreach for it. And then um, they also form a nominating committee under the Executive Committee to help facilitate that process. Um, the one thing that's interesting is that FERCOG actually, um, Jessica, who is their uh, SEDS program manager over there, she told me that they used to have representation on their committee from 26 towns, so that's all the towns in their region, but then they actually changed it to sub-regions. Um, so I think they were having problems with um, quorum and getting people there, but also it was just, I think, a little bit difficult to manage at that size. Um, does anybody have any questions on this document, on how the other RPAs do it? or any further questions that you want me to look into or does this pretty much hit the main points that folks were wondering about? No? Okay. 
So Sorry, on to our Sorry, mm -hmm. Joanne, just no, um, thank you for doing it. Cause I think, uh, you know, we're all in different, the, the regional planning agencies are all in different shapes and sizes. But I think the fact that you have this background, um, just kind of do a comparative analysis, just to see where they are, how they're functioning. Um, the idea is really just to be able to take a lot of the topics that are of needs within our region and to really see like where there are our, our, um, com commonalities. In addition to that, both you and Dottie attend the um, Economic Development um, Directors um, Committee once a month and lots of great conversations from that as well. So just um, thank you for your work on that. Sure. You're very welcome. All right, so moving on to the um, terms of reference. So at our last meeting, um, we went through pretty much all of this in quite a lot of detail. Um, so article one on page one, I believe is complete, unless anybody has any further comments on that. Uh, Joanne, I think it would be helpful yep. to have the document up if oh, possible, sure. so we can move through it together. Sure, let's do that. Um... Welcome, Chris. <laughs> Just want to make sure that he gets um, noted for um, being here. That's great. Thank you. All right, here we go. Everybody sees that okay? Yeah? Yes. Okay, so this is um, Article One Purpose, so our name and authority, the purpose of the committee, and the area that is served, which is the OCPC area. Any additional comments on that? I think everybody was pretty okay with this last time. Okay. So this is where we got, um, we had quite a bit of discussion. Um, article two on membership. So section one, um, eligibility and application. Um, we've left it vague um, that anybody with relevant professional experience living in or working within the area is defined who has an interest in economic development may apply to the committee to become a member. Um, we left application vague. So the understanding is that there's no form. Um, it would just be somebody expressing an interest and then that interest gets passed on to the SEDS committee via the chair or the co-chairs. Um, and then it will be discussed and considered at the committee level and then recommended at that point, um, if successful onto the governing council at OCPC for a final appointment. Um, any questions on that? I think we were good with that one last meeting. I think we were good with that. Okay, good. And then sections three through um, eight down here, I believe we were fine with those as well. So we're really looking at this section here on membership. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I made no changes to this text up here. Um, so at the moment, we suggested um, that it would be capped at 19 voting members. Right now, our list is about 23. Attendance varied historically from, I think, 9 or nine to 12 people generally. Um, but I don't think the membership roster was always um, up to date in terms of who was leaving a town, joining a town, moving on to another place, that kind of thing. Um, so the key decision to be made here is, you know, what is the magic number? How many do we want? And then do we want to leave membership relatively open so we can decide as a committee, you guys can decide as a committee who's actually on it, or do we want to specify that we want X representatives from municipalities, X from business communities, X from academia. So if you look back at that document on how the other um, RPAs do it, some of them are very open-ended and others aren't. Um, so for example, SERPED, um, it's up to Don at SERPED, who's the SEDS program manager to approve the membership and pass it on to the chair. Um, and then for others like FERCOG, they actually do have um, a target number for regional representation from municipalities, as well as some of the other organizations. Um, they're probably the most stringent um, and SERPED is probably the loosest. So does anybody have any further thoughts on that? 
Um, this is Pam. I actually think we make it much more difficult for ourselves if you have a, a set number from each of those different categories. I think it's it's better um, to have it more open like we've had in the past. Um, and, and the other thing I want to mention is um, as far as the, the number of voting members, can you put something in there that says something like, um, you know, subject to change, um, you know, something that says, I don't know if it's once a year or whenever the, the current voting members decide to, to review it and possibly expand the number or, or make it less, just something to make it more flexible so you can change it if need be. On your second point, there is a clause at the end of the terms. Um, okay. Yeah, that does say that anything can be altered, amended, or repealed pretty much at any time. So awesome. I think that clause, yeah, covers yeah. that number, definitely. Thanks. Anybody else have any thoughts on Pam's comments or otherwise? I I, um, I did, I am interested in the, um, I'm not sure which sample, um, you know, uh, peer institution you got this from, but I'm interested in the idea of subregions. And, you know, I, I don't have, um, you know, that I, I'm not representing, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from the higher ed academia side of the house, um, not municipalities, but I, I do realize that we, you know, um, consistently have not had uh, regular attendance from the municipalities um, or many of the municipalities there in our region. And I'm wondering if um, subregions would make sense um, either as you know, a minimum, or if not, and we just keep it open, that we target, you know, the subregions. We, um, you know, request that um, there be someone who can um, attend the meetings. Mary, I, I don't. Mm -hmm. For discussion. Mary, I don't think there are formal subregions in our region, are there? I know MAPC has formalized regions, but no, they're huge. We, we do not. We're only 17 communities. And, um, you know, for us to do that really doesn't make that much sense um, unless someone really feels differently. But I think the fact that we've done some analysis about, you know, healthcare is the largest employer, right? And then, you know, we can kind of tail back in terms of the industries, but I'm not quite sure how we would. Um, divide ourselves. Joanne, it's Dottie. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe, you know, if this committee looks at the representation and the makeup and the, the areas of the geography, that it might make sense to recruit people specifically if you realize that, you know, everybody that's attending is, you know, from south of Brockton maybe somebody recruits somebody from you know a different part of the of the area or if we are loaded with municipal representatives and we need some more from academia we can recruit specifically yeah so i think that follows in line with what pam is suggesting so in that case we leave it open but the committee would identify gaps and then um, ocpc staff could help fill those gaps up with you know, the, what the folks at the committee suggested. Um, anybody else? That would, uh, mm -hmm. that, sorry, Joanne, that would mm -hmm. also, um, you know, satisfy sort of my question about sub subcommittees, just in general, in terms of representation, if there are gaps, you know, or if we're feeling that a voice is needed that isn't there. Um, you know, the, 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 the idea of um, targeting, you know, um, a, a, an area or an industry or whatever um, would definitely meet that issue. Mm -hmm. And maybe it will be helpful. So we haven't really talked about, I'm not entirely familiar to be honest on how it was done in the past recruitment. I, I think it was just kind of people who came, came and I'm not sure if recruitment was, um, a significant part of Bruce's role, but I do, um, what I was hoping is that once we get these terms of reference confirmed, the committee at their meeting after that would review the current list of members. So there are some people, for example, like Robert Downey, who's no longer at the town of Kingston, um, Deb Petty, who's no longer at the town of Hanson, 
Um, there are lots of changes on this list. I'd say roughly about half of the folks on there at the moment probably aren't going to turn up in any meetings because they've moved on or, or whatever else. Um, so we need to review the current list and sh figure out who wants to continue and who needs to be removed. And then we'd have to identify, and I think there's going to be quite a few vacancies at that point, identify who would be filled um, for those seats, whatever the cap is that we decide on. Um, so I think that would be the next step after these terms is to really do that targeted recruitment and work within the committee to figure out, you know, what are the gaps that are missing. Um, so for example, we don't really, I don't believe we have anybody who represents um, small business interests on the committee or large employers in the region um, or any small business associations, although we do have Chris from the chamber, but there are also small town level um, associations. So there's, there's quite a few that we could identify, I think. Um, does anybody else have any thoughts on membership? Rob, I think at the previous meetings, you were kind of leaning towards option one. How, how are you feeling? Um, I understand how it, it uh, affects, um, you know, quorum and, and voting. Uh, if you have a certain number of spots per, you know, for municipalities, for business community and for academia at large or, or academia um, or workforce or, or whoever that other nonprofit sector is. Um, but I'm hoping that we don't get overloaded with uh, either academia or business or municipalities. Um, so I don't know how, oh, sorry. Um, you know, maybe it's a stated goal that we represent all three sectors and not necessarily attach a specific number to it that uh, becomes much more um, flexible for use. We do have this bullet up here, which maybe we could amend more towards what you're saying. So here it just says that membership shall be representative of the region's mix of public, private, and nonprofit sector stakeholders. Um, hmm. We could try and build that out with like workforce development, academia, or we could try and aim for like one third public, one third private, one third nonprofit, and specifically kind of state that as a goal. Are we really going to get private sector participation? So pretty much all of the other um, RPAs do have private sector participation. Well, they have them on their boards. Does they, do they participate? Are they going to come for the pizza um, or you know, actually participate? So if I could weigh in a little bit on this, um, and apologies for, um, um, but some of this comes from some of the past experience, which I don't want to rely on because while it was a, a, a helpful for dialogue, it really wasn't necessarily effective. Um, you would have one group of people come and then the next meeting there'd be a new set of people and some of the people from the old meeting didn't get invited to the new meeting. Uh -huh. So the idea of organizing this is really important to be effective. Um, I, I remember one of the, um, when we were applying for the university center, when I was at Bridgewater State, applying for the university center um, application, it was really important not only to the state, but also to some of our federal groups that we do have, in fact, private industry represented. Um, some of that is, I think, to Joanne's point, is represented by the chamber and what they stand for and their membership right it's so multiple it's big and large and, and what have you but but they really wanted to see an actual business person because until you are the struggling small business and not have you know and, and we can um um intimate what their needs are but until you really have them coming and explaining saying listen you guys are just being too drawn up into the bureaucratic bureaucratic stuff i just need to know like where to get my funds and how do i who do i who else do i bring with me who i can get these resources so 
I think, you know, I don't have um, and I don't weigh in with a vote or anything, but I think the idea is that the group of people that have been involved and engaged throughout this last year um, are people that we should be relying on, like the tourism, right, with, with Lee and, and, and all the discussions that are happening with that, you know, it's all tied in. So um, I think for us to be allocating a particular percentage to the industries can be, you'd be spending more time trying to manage those numbers as opposed to bringing in someone to have a special discussion and and see if this is the environment they want to be in and then ask them if they want to be part you know the, the committee can choose to say we'd like to have them be continue to be part of the committee so moved i think that kind of speaks to you know um all the issues that have been raised in terms of targeting you know, targeting voices that we want to hear, you know, who's not at the table. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, this is Pam. I just had another comment. I'm one of those people that I, I faithfully attended the meetings for about six years. And then during the pandemic, I was so overwhelmed with helping the businesses and different projects that I couldn't attend all of the time. So, you know, you might get municipalities to designate people, but there's going to be an ebb and flow as to when people are going to be able to attend meetings and when they're not. So it, it is good to be able to maybe have two people from each community. I know Forrest Lindwall is on the list from Stoughton, but he might be a member at large. Um, just so you have a backup. Um, we, I do that with the, the TRIC meetings for MAPC. There are two of us, and usually if someone can't go, we'll say, well, can you make the meeting? I'm not able to attend it. Um, so I don't know how you would do that to maybe allow two people from each municipality to have the right to attend the meetings, but maybe not be a voting member. If both of us ended up at one meeting, only one of us would actually be voting on anything. And to your point, at one of our previous meetings, um, folks thought substitutes would be acceptable. So we've got a provision here that allows a voting member to send a substitute of their choice. So if you're not able to make it, you could send somebody else from the town or somebody from one of your businesses in Stoughton, whoever you would feel comfortable um, voting on your behalf, essentially. That, that's, but maybe it would be more that kind of a designated substitute, like, you know, if you can't make it, you're not looking, which person should I send kind of, a known a formal fact alternate. that if so and so can't go, then, then the other person can go. And the other thing I wanted to mention was, um, as far as the, as the municipal participation is concerned, it really seemed like whenever there was a topic and, and you had a speaker and it was something that was um, you know, very interesting and important to most of the communities, then you did have a lot of participation. I'm thinking about um, the municipal aggregation process. We're doing it again in Stoughton, so it's on the top of my mind, but you had someone from every community at all of those meetings when we were dealing with that. So, so you'll, you'll also have um, it happen that depending on, on what um, is being presented at the time, what people are working on, then you're going to have a lot more of the municipal people attend um, that can't come to all the regular meetings. So it seems like the language um, is flexible enough to allow for those ebbs and flows. Um, and certainly Pam recognized that, you know, depending on the issue and depending on, you know, things, massive environmental factors like, you know, the pandemic, um, there's going to be different, different faces, you know, um, who will need to be able to come. And I, I think that, um, you know, these are public meetings, they're open meetings, anybody can attend. Um, so I, I feel like that's, you know, addressed in what we've got here. But it's a great point, and I'm glad you brought it up. And also the same thing with the designee. You know, we do have <clears throat> the language. Um, if you can scroll down a little bit, Joanne, just to what you had, what you had just shown. Um, either the substitutes. Do you feel, Pam, like that would that that this addresses that? I, I'm just concerned that some municipalities may be so straight out that it would be hard for them to designate two people 
oh, they might be reluctant to do that. But like in my case from Massasoit, if I can't make it, I can send someone. That's no problem. Yeah, I, I guess it could be done internally as long as there's the option to have the substitutes, you know, I can decide that so-and-so, I'm gonna ask if they can come to the meetings if I can't. And if another community sends different people to different meetings, then I guess that's their prerogative. So I, I guess the language does cover that. So are we um, in a place where we feel that option two is, is what we want to um, go with here? Yes. Does anyone have um, an, oppos an opposite view? So um, if, does this require a vote, Joanne? I, don't, I think it's just agreement, right? I think that's probably acceptable, yeah. Okay, so I think if if we if the committee goes with option two, then I think um, the language here would be the full language for the membership membership section. Is that correct? So it's still left that we're having nineteen members mm -hmm. that can always be amended. It's we do okay. state the intent that it's got to be representative yeah. with these interests, and then one person, one vote from each municipality organization. Anything missing from that? Or is, that sound good to folks? That's awesome. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that sounds good to me. Um, and I invite folks if they have any objection to weigh in now. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, shall we move on? Is that all right then? It sounds, sounds good. Like it. Okay, so um, these sections we discussed previously. Um, stop me if there's anything you do want to say about them. Um, so that moves us on to article three, talking about the meetings. The next decision is on quorum. So as you'll see, um, most of the other RPAs, their committees do do a majority. I think in one of the previous versions of these terms, we had suggested that we say nine voting members be a quorum. Uh, MAPC doesn't have a quorum at all, um, but their members also don't have voting power. Um, and FERCOG um, states that their quorum is seven members. So I kind of hesitate. So a quorum as a majority would be if we have 19 members, that would be what, nine, 10 at a meeting? So we could stick with simple majority, or we can just specify the number seven or nine. Just simple majority, I think, should be sufficient. I agree with that. OK. Super, simple majority. Okay. Just, before, just before we move on, um, I understand, I think we have um, Jay Mech. Uh, who has joined us for the meeting. So if you could, um, I'm not, we're not sure who you are. So if you could just identify yourself for the purpose of the meeting and the notes, that would be great. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm Joe Mack and I'm with the Brockton Area Transit Authority. And I'm just curious as to the function of this committee. So I was listening in and trying to get a sense of how this all works. Oh no, that's great. You're very, very welcome. And please feel free to ask questions. We just, like I said, I just wanted to identify you so that um, everyone could know. Sure. Hmm. Did you say J? J O no. I? Joe. Yeah. Thanks. Hi. <laughs> Hello. All right. Um, okay, so we've got a simple majority on that. And then. Um, the last change um, that we would like to suggest, that OCPC would like to suggest, is um, just to stick in line with the terms of our grant with the um, Economic Development Administration. Um, we'd like to change the language of clerk and instead call the clerk the SEDS program manager. Um, 
And so the wording here would basically be the same, but it would be the OCPC staff member who manages the SEDS program shall carry out the following administrative duties on behalf of the committee. And then the rest would follow. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Duane, could you, could you um, say again what it is what mm -hmm. you obtained here? Sure, so just to avoid confusion between the grants that we get from the Economic Development Administration and the language in the, these terms, mm -hmm. what we're proposing is that we change the word clerk and actually call it the OCPC, um, sorry, the SEDS program manager. So this language would then read um, the OCPC staff member who manages the SEDS program shall carry out the following administrative duties on behalf of the committee. I, I think that sounds appropriate, Joanne. It just it it's more of an identification of the role and what you do to make these meetings happen. So that's that's okay with me. Um, it, we certainly don't want there to be any confusion with with like grant you know applications or anything like that or voting membership or what have you. So whatever clarification you guys feel appropriate is, is okay by me. Okay. Um, and that's, I believe, all that was left to um, to discuss, unless anybody else has anything on Article 6 or 7, <clears throat> anything that's missing, anything we haven't covered. Okay, so at this- We've adopted mm -hmm. by the OCPC board at their next meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a good question, Rob. So my opinion is that I don't think the, the governing board needs to adopt these principles on behalf of the committee, but Mary, what do you think? Oh, you're muted. I, I, yeah, I, it's, it's kind of like how I feel with this head cold, I'm talking to myself. Um, I mean, in terms of all of this, uh, I mean, to be, brought up at the next meeting. Part of me feels like this conversation today really has put us in a good stead. Um, <clears throat> what's what's the, the mindset behind that, Rob? Well, I didn't know if if the, the larger organization was going to approve this or if the committee was going to approve this because technically we don't have a committee according to this charter because the, the board has not voted on us being representatives. So here's my suggestion, just because we've got lots of, I think your, to your point, I think it, there's circular. a timing issue, but I would say, I think this committee should vote on this um, with as a, maybe more of a, of, a, of a recommendation. I think Joanne, maybe we prepare a resolve for the council to have these be presented. Um, but have you know have them be effective upon the old colony planning council's adoption um that way it stay it saves a meeting like this has yeah. been these last couple of weeks have been a couple of months have been really great discussions and, and conversations but you, part of me feels by waiting too too long down the road then we're right right back to beginning to revise them again so let's implement let's kind of give that right that that ebb and flow and see how it works let's get the council to adopt we're going through our own um, um, bylaws and personnel bylaws changes this is part of the transparency and the cleansing if you will so um that would be my recommendation this committee should vote there's been some good discussions get it to the council and for the next meeting, start implementing to see how it works. So I think, so, so um, I believe the only thing that the governing council has to vote on as the governing board of the Economic Development District is the five-year SED strategy and the committee appointments. Gotcha. Everything else, including the annual reports, any terms the committee sets for themselves, um, webinars they decide to do, whatever other decisions they make, mm -hmm. isn't required um yep. to be approved by the the higher up folks you know and, so, I do, I, and i do at some point need to have you joanne and maybe the chairs to just come to the council to do an overview anyway so i think yeah. that could be very beneficial yeah hmm. so i think this committee would adopt as mary was saying adopt hmm. these terms and then they're just presented for information to the governing council 
Um, and if they have any issues, then that can always come back down to the committee for discussion. So we have two options. We can either um, vote on these to accept them based on the changes that have been agreed today, or I can come back to the next meeting with a fresh draft and then we can vote at that point, which whichever the committee would prefer. Uh, not not to be belabor anything at all, and I, I I think this looks really good, and I'm I'm really I think it's great, but I I do think um, a final draft is necessary, um, you know, for people to have a final look, and um, if it's going to be something that we you know forward up, um, you know, for sharing with the governing council, that it it should be the final draft. Okay. So what that means in terms of moving forward is OCPC's annual um, meeting is at the end of this month. Um, so I'll reach out to everybody individually who's currently a member to confirm that they'd like to continue as a member. And we'll present those names at the annual meeting for them to, um, for the governing council to vote through. And then at our next meeting, um, assuming the final draft is voted on and approved, I'll have an, a better idea or I will know how many vacancies there then are. So we can then start identifying um, who we want to target or what interests we want to target for those vacancies. That sounds like a good plan. I like it. Okay. All right, so I think that's it on the terms. Awesome. Thank you so much again to the staff um, for all the work that's gone into sort of putting a lot of structure around the work that we do. We're um, positioned, you know, to, to do great work going forward. So I look forward to that. And, um, you know, for the final draft and the recommendation that we put forward. Shout out to the team again for, for doing all that work. Uh, I think now in, uh, we're going to move over to Dottie to talk about the July webinar, which is in keeping with our decision to every other month um, do a webinar. So Dottie. Hello, everyone. So we were looking at in July um, to bring on Judy Barrett, who most people probably know her. She's very well known in the housing circles um, as a planner. And also to bring on Peter Foreman, who um, is the executive director of the South Shore Chamber and has had numerous um, webinars and presentations also on housing. And then I would also be involved as someone from a municipality because of the work that we've done in Easton around housing. And um, <clears throat> we were looking at, you know, possibly uh, doing like a panel kind of a discussion or, you know, a, a few minutes each of us and then opening it up for questions. Um, wanted to get some feedback on that. And also normally our time is at noon, but Judy has a, a conflict and wanted to see if we could move the meeting to one o'clock that day. So we also wanted to kind of run that by everyone. So is there anything specific that you would like to see or know or have answered um, around housing and economic development or your thoughts on, on that? A really good workshop on 40B last night that I went to for the CPTC right. group. Um, I, think, I think knowing maybe what other communities in the region yeah. are looking at doing, um, are there regional needs for housing coordinators? I know like Kingston's looking for some, um, partnership with housing to try to track it and improve on it. Um, and uh, I guess I'm wondering how much locally we need to focus on housing in terms of um, getting funds. You know, is there anything we can be doing as a region to secure funding? Is there reporting we need to do that or resources that we aren't tapping? That kind of thing. Those are good comments and good questions. I think that with um, you know the housing choice legislation that went through is particularly focused on housing around transit. Um, we have a lot of transit in our region, so that might be something to, to also kind of zero in on and see you know what our community is doing that are around transit. 
this is so exciting. Usually when I say housing, I have people start yelling at me during meetings or running from the room. So <laughs> All right. Well, actually, Connie, to that point, and I don't mean to you know, rain on your parade because it's all, you know, it's all good. Um, but I'm wondering if the presenters can touch on, you know, what the not only what's happening with with housing, but what, um, you know, barriers they're facing. You know, I think that would that would sort of help everybody understand it a little better. I think we probably know this group to some extent, what the needs are, but maybe not necessarily what the um, challenges are. Sure, that's an excellent point. Um, this is Pam. I, I also think maybe we can touch on um, the, the difficulty of the first time home buyers getting into the market now with the, with the prices being astronomical for, for the houses. Um, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how much they're increasing every single month. So maybe if we could do something with assistance that we could maybe lend to the first time home buyers, because I get calls at my office all the time asking if we have any type of program in place that could help them with a down payment. Um, I know that, um, that they, they, they did have a program um, somewhere in Brockton. Um, I'm trying to think of the organization right now, but um, we didn't have anything locally. So that's, so that's one thing I think people might be interested in. Okay, great. Anyone else? All right. That sounds good, Joanne. All right, and I think we're okay. Everybody's okay with 1 p.m. Super, all right, so we'll send out info for that soon. And then um, a September webinar. We yes. On the topic. <clears throat> so at one of our previous meetings, we talked about. Um, so there are um, quite a. We've got a long running list of ideas. Um, we had talked about doing a webinar on marketing your community for business, which would include the importance of municipal websites and their content. Um, Dotty and um, Dotty, remind me which communities are part of your business directory grant right now? Avon, Brockton, Easton, and Stoughton. So we'll have some experience with business directories and municipalities um, and a few other things. So we thought that could be a good webinar topic for September, unless anybody else had any um, suggestions for something that's maybe more urgent to present on. I think that we talked uh, at some point recently, maybe the last meeting where we, or whenever we were generating this list of ideas about um, workforce development um, and given the state of the economy and um, you know, trying to get people urgently back to work, um, you know, there's a lot of federal funding coming down the pike um, for workforce, for it, higher education, even for K through 12. I don't know, you know, if we, we, if we wanna put that in you know, somewhere, uh, if not for the September, maybe for the one after that. But it does seem rather urgent. Yeah, you know, and if I can piggyback on what Mary, Mary Ellen said, you know, we we talked internally, Joanne, about water and its role as a resource for economic development. Um, the whole climate change is a piece for lots of funding that are coming down. And one might think, well, what does climate change and we having longer, warmer days have to do with economic development, but it has everything to do with it. So um, I, you know, I'm looking at Val now, not as well, because I know that there's a number of communities that have also brought this up. So where it falls, I think this is where the vetting of conversations with when we bring new people in all the time, you know, Joe is on this in terms of transportation, right? Access to jobs and access to um, education is, is going to be critical now that the colleges and universities are coming back. So um, anyway, those are my two cents. I mean, other topics that we had on our list included um, best practices around revitalizing downtowns and main streets, um, writing winning grants, arts and culture as an economic development driver, uh, tourism and economic development, um, future of retail and restaurants, using infrastructure to drive economic development, uh, clean energy, pace, um, and a variety of things related to that. 
plus the workforce development and also the regional um, water sewer issues. So it sounds like the two contenders for September are marketing your community for business and workforce development. So whichever the committee would prefer is what we'll go for. I'll, I'll put in a vote for workforce development. I was going to say for workforce development also because the um, unemployment is going to stop with the extended unemployment in around that September time frame, and I think there's going to be a lot of people that are probably looking for work and you know not just looking for jobs but also you know something that I think mass hire I'm excited about is that the, the retraining um, you know, you're 50 years old and your job no longer exists. How do you start something new? What kind of training is available? Um, I think it's an important topic because I'm hearing some of that in my circles. Um, and also, you know, the education, uh, Mary Ellen, that, that you're, uh, you know, you're offering and these kinds of things, people feel stuck. Like, you know, I, don't, I just don't know where to turn or if their circumstances have changed because um, maybe they need something part-time because they've, you know, their, their kids in school, who knows what that's going to look like in the fall. Hopefully it's back to normal, but some people that I know are not going back to that same, you know, they're really looking for something a little bit um, different. If, um, if there's no objection, uh, I would suggest um, for September workforce development. And I, I also suggest that, um, you know, that, that, that be sort of combined or we invite academia to be to be part of like almost the same way we're doing in July with having a housing expert in Peter Foreman um, from the chamber. Um, we could do kind of a higher education slash workforce development for September, if that makes sense to people. Does anybody talk to the trades? Because I've been dealing with a lot of contractors over the last several months and they're all dying for people to mm. work with them, apprenticeships and such. Mass hire works. I'll take that over to you, Jason. I know you guys and John. I know you guys work a lot with the trades. Uh, yes and no. Uh, with the trades, it struggles uh, in conversations. Typically, break down because most of the trades hire certain times of the year, and mm -hmm. it never really seems to get anywhere. We we do talk to them. Um, maybe John can add on, but. Just because of some of the ways they hire, it's a lot difficult in the way they use apprentices. I, I, I think what we've seen is the trades, uh, to your point, Joe, of facing sort of the same issues that all businesses are facing right now and just attracting people. Um, I was talking with a, a retiring electrician at a local 103 in Boston, and he told me that the um, they're starting to target now recruiting 25 to 30 year olds um, for apprenticeships where in the past that was always, you know, 18 to 24 year olds they were looking at. And I think that's sure. sort of indicative right now of, um, you know, where, where kids are as they're getting out of high school and trying to figure out which way they want to go that um, the trades are starting to look at an older group for them, uh, just because people uh, seem to be more settled and have an idea of direction, which I found was interesting. But um, I mean, we just ran a job here in uh, May, and you know, we had almost as many companies as we had job seekers. Wow! So it's it, to get people right now to get out and uh, take that job um, has really been a struggle. To Dottie's point, I think we're what we're expecting in September is sort of an avalanche of job seekers when the federal benefits expire. Um, that's when it's really going to, I think, turn turn back on. But starting today, the state has uh, lifted the um, exemptions on work search. So for people that are required to collect unemployment uh, that are collecting, they are required now to prove that they're looking at least three times a week. And in July, there'll be sanctions on people that don't meet certain requirements. So it's it's slowly uh, coming back to pre-pandemic, but um, people are really hesitant, I think, to, to get back out there still at this time. 
So September might be an interesting time. Right, no. So, so it, but, but, it, but it's these kind of conversations, right? I mean, the fact of even just bringing up the trades, I mean, and having this dialogue that you just had, John, in terms of the difficulties or having just as many, you know, uh, job seekers as there were at, at the um, job fair, you know, I, it's, as I sit and listen, right? I still go back then to the business directory and how do we help, you know, these small businesses who are just even thinking, so, I mean, to see, new businesses that have begun during COVID, you know, and what they've struggled to do and those that lost but want to come back and what are we doing for them? So there's so many, so many um, other topics. So so I'd almost even, Joanne, um, because uh, things can change between now and September. So, so let's kind of keep, I think if this committee, if you keep it fluid and keep things, you know, have these dis discussions, I think we'll be, you know, I think, I think it would be healthy just to address that could what happens in the meantime. Um, lots of different things could come, different funding that could redirect us or at least needs our attention to have a discussion to help guide. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm just trying to follow that. Um, we've got the uh, housing webinar in July. Mm -hmm. And Mary, are you suggesting that we don't choose a topic at this time? No, no, because I, I, I think to try to plan that would um, for my my dear friend Joanne, who if we are a little bit too loosey goosey, but 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 it's all fairness, right? Because you're gonna give me a heart attack, attack Mary. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I was like, she's gonna like good thing she's remote. But it, but I do think, and I apologize for sounding like I'm over it, um, stating the idea to be flexible. But let's plan for that workforce. I think there it was pretty conclusive out of everyone to do that. But maybe do you need the whole hour or maybe that we tack on a little bit about, hey, what's that small business or what about that, the, the trades and having a little bit more discussion than what we're having now, um, just to be a little bit prepared, not to have the whole meeting. Um, I'm looking this way because that's where my Joanne is, is on my screen, but not to have the whole meeting. But, you know, this is healthy to have um, from someone from academia like yourself, Mary Ellen, as well as the workforce and, and all the others. So. It's um, I, I I'm encouraged by the discussion. This, this so what is I'll going to be is a I'll... webinar, right, Joanne? It, yeah, this a is a webinar or a meeting. No, this is going to be a webinar. Um, and I'll reach out to the committee. I mean, we're going to meet beforehand anyway, but um, I'll reach out to the committee after this meeting for further suggestions and ideas on workforce, narrowing that down, you know, funneling it down a bit, and also thinking of the the correct panelists. Because um, it's such a huge topic, like housing, right? So, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. great idea. So we'll 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 wait on hearing uh, from you, Joanne, to start the planning mm -hmm. of that. And then, just in the interest of time, and I know people have webinars. I'm gonna sort of rapidly go through the rest of that meeting, if that's okay. Um, so, economic recovery resource and grants, study. Is there anything that you can sort of concisely? That's a big topic. Sure. Well, what we can do right now, you know, some of the grants um, PPP isn't really available anymore. There, there are, I can put some links, I'll send them to Joanne and when she sends the follow-up email, we'll just put those out. There's some links to the, um, the, you, the US um, Chamber of Commerce and there's a lot of things available for there. Um, once the APA money really gets sorted out in Massachusetts, I think the state will have some more grants at that point, but I don't have anything really hot right now other than some of the bigger grants. Um, and one, we're following OPER very closely. So when that comes, um, we'll do that. And um, just wanna say the business directory that we're working on, we're really having some great success. We got Stoughton to join on and I'm really excited about that. But also Lee Filson, who was here earlier, they just did a, a regional app called C Plymouth, and that's really focused more on tourism. This is really more on business with a municipal edge, so they're they're kind of different. So, um, if you're going to be in the Plymouth area, download the C Plymouth S E E Plymouth app and uh, check out the a lot of information in there. Awesome, will do. Thank you. Um, is there any other other business? Any member updates? Okay, public comment. Awesome. So the next meeting is um, August 7th at 12 noon. 
um, other than the webinar that will be coming in July. And um, we'll watch for the information to flow that. This was a great conversation, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great rest of the day. Bye. Bye, thank you.